uh, in June, June the 11th, 2021. God is uh, uh, so uh, gracious and grateful. Uh, I'm grateful, should I say, for his graciousness for to allow me to live and have the experience of this another Lord's Day. We thank God for those of our members who have been faithful throughout <clears throat> even uh, this these months of having the virus and have, uh, uh, have been faithful both in prayer and uh, in the service. Thank God for that today. All right, let's get started. We need to get started. Uh, we want to start off with our mission statement uh, together. Uh, I want to thank uh, Brother Chris, Chris Ags Jr. Uh, who's helping me out today. He's kind of doing dual role today. We want to thank him for his faithfulness also uh, throughout the, uh, even these uh, pandemics uh, day. All right, let's read uh, our mission statement. It reads, the Grace Tabernacle Missionary Baptist Church is commissioned to reach the unsaved, restore the unchurched, and make disciples within the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. We are committed to evangelizing sinners, equipping saints, and elevating society by responding biblically to the challenges faced by all members of our society. Our ultimate goal is to be a biblical model that glorifies God, expresses the love of Jesus Christ, and impacts the world through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Let's give God a hand clap of praise and appreciation for giving us a common mission that every member is needed to accomplish uh, the mission that God has has given us. Let's go to God in prayer and ask him to bless our word today, uh, which of course will be brief, but let's go to God in prayer and ask his presence. Father, in the precious and powerful name of Jesus, who truly is the Christ, we come now, God, and we ask first of all that you would forgive us of our sins. We pray now, God, that you would cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And God, we pray for a wholesome uh, and full fellowship with your spirit. We pray now, God, that you will speak through us and to us, God, and that, God, that we will be built up so that we might be able to accomplish the mission here on planet Earth that you've given us. Thank you for what you have done. And we will be so sure to give you the praise to give you the glory and the honor that's due you and you uh, alone. Amen, amen, and amen. Our word today will come from John, the 15th chapter. I want to read starting at verse 9. You may stand out of the reverence of God's word. It reads, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commands and remained in his love, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this to lay down one's life for one's friend. You are my friends and if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friend for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. I want to talk very briefly about having 
the right connection, having the right connection. You may be seated. Having the right connection. Whenever we talk about having connections, usually we are referring to having uh, influence uh, socially and politically. Uh, uh, but, but the question today is do you have uh, the connection you need to effectively cope with the difficulties of life? Do you have the right connection to cope with the difficulties of life? The Apostle Paul even uh, confirmed that life is difficult. And that's what he told Timothy, to endure the hardness of life as a good soldier. That's what he told his, 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 his disciple Timothy, to, 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 to endure. Life is difficult, and you need to be connected right in order to deal with the difficulties of life. And so I want to just talk about, uh, do you have the right connection? Do you have the, the right connection? There are three things that this text today tell us about having the right connection. The first thing is the object in the relationship. The object in the relationship. Look what verse 13 says uh, about the object in the relationship. He says, greater love has no one than this is to lay down one's life for one's friend. Amen. He called the relationship friends. The relationship that, that he's talking about here is the relationship or the object, should I say, is people. The people. Amen. People. To, 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 that uh, God's object of love is to love people. Christ loved people and he, he, he uh, exemplified that by for by dying for us. And the text goes on to tell us that there is no greater love, no greater expression of love than to lay down one life for a friend. Amen. And the friend is he's talking about the world and the world he's talking about here uh, is the world of people. Uh, the world of, of people. Uh, now, there are basically uh, three different worlds in, in, in Scripture. Uh, first of all, when, when Scripture talks about the world, it sometimes is talking about the world, the geographical, the geographical world, the, the, the earth, uh, the world, the, the, that world. He's talking about the geographical world. And then secondly, scripture, when it talks about the world, it's talking about sinners, the world, talking about the worldly way of doing things, and that, that Satan is the, uh, the, the, the uh, ruler of the world. It's talking about the ruler of sin, talking about the world of, uh, of sin. That's what it's talking about when it talks about the world. And then lastly, the world, when it implies the world that he talks about in this text, he's talking about the world of people, population, people, and, and his object of that he desires a relationship, God desires a relationship with the world of people, both sinners and saints. Amen. And so uh, he, his object is that he wants a relationship. He wants an intimate, matter of fact, relationship with people. Look what it says, and I want, let me go back to that, that to what he says in John, the third chapter. Look what it says. John 3, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And again, as I uh, stated previously, that that world is the world of people. Christ
Christ did not die for organizations, political parties. Uh, uh, he did not even die, amen, uh, for just black folk. Christ died for the world, the population of people. And that's the object of, of his relationship. And listen, T.D. Jake says this, that love is not proven, listen at this, until it's tested. Hmm. Uh, Simone, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm convinced that love cannot uh, be stated or proven until Rod is at his worst. Your love is not necessarily proven when Rod is at his best. There is a reason, amen, for you to love Rod when he's doing all the things he should be. But, but, but the Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And, and what he's saying that, that when we were at our worst, Christ expressed his love for us. Amen. And, and so that, that's where you see whether you have true love is when the person is at their worst. Amen. We get married and we up under some, some, some very positive things. We look at the wedding and we look at the wedding pictures. Everybody's so happy. And then we talk about we love something. But, but it's not really proven until we are at our worst when we're at our worst. And, and we ought to be very cautious even when we say we love somebody. Right. When you love them when they're not all that they should be. Amen. But the object of Christ's love is people. Number two in the text, look at verse 14 back at John uh, 15 chapter. Back at John 15 chapter. Uh, go back, go to verse 14. It says, verse 14 says that you are my friends if you do what I command. The second object in this text is not only the objective in the relationship, but the obedience for the relationship, the obedience. Uh, uh, verse 14, that, that if we have a relationship with Christ, we will obey him. And that's talking about an intimacy. Uh, as as uh, we as pastors fail uh, to treat this principle that we are saved by faith, but we are blessed. We are saved by faith, but we are blessed by obedience. We are saved by faith, but we are blessed by obedience. Uh, what that says is that God, amen, like ourselves, do not necessarily treat the bad child the same as he would the good child. The, the good child has to have a, a blessing for being obedient. Amen. Amen. And we don't. Hey, I can recall many times when, when the kids were blow, growing up, Simone, that they would do something and I didn't even want to punish them, but I, I was compelled to punish them because they was disobedient. I, I could not treat them the same. I, could, I, could, I couldn't go to the Six Flags if they were disobedient that week. Or you would, I want to go to Six Flags too. Amen. amen, amen. Matter of fact, it hurts me to have fun because I am punished too. Right. Amen. Amen. And, and you know, one thing about it, you're talking about uh, putting somebody in jail. When you put somebody in jail, somebody else who haven't done anything has to be punished too to, to watch over. I mean, right. so 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 that's the way it is. God doesn't necessarily want to punish us, but he has to. Amen. Or should I say there has to be a distinction between the obedient child and the disobedient. And so he has to bless, amen, those of us who are faithful. He has to bless those who do what he says, amen.
Amen. So what, what is the incentive for obeying him? Is the blessings. Right. Amen. And so that, that he wants that, but he wants that relationship. But we're saved necessarily by faith and not necessarily by obedience. And thank God for that. But he does uh, show distinction for those who of us who are obedient by blessing us. The third thing and last final thing in this text is found in verse 15. Verse 15 in this text says this. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I call, I have called you friend for everything I have learned from you. My Father, I have made known to you. Amen. Everything I've learned from the Father, I've made known to you. And that changes the type of relationship. And the third thing I want to talk about is the openness. The openness of the relationship. The openness of relationship. Turn with me to Genesis. Last time turning to the name. Genesis, the 18th chapter. Genesis 18 chapter verse 17. Got you. Church, I should, you all, I, I had notes for you all. Y'all could have had notes. Uh, but uh, the uh, 17th verse says this. Then the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do? All right? The, the openness of what we have in, as a relationship as believers is that Christ does not want to call us servants, but he, want to, he wants a relationship that calls us friends. And the difference is, is that as servants, you don't tell your servant everything you're doing in the house. But a friend knows everything, the most intimacy of, of, about ourselves. You tell your friends everything. Amen. Because there's a difference in the relationship. You're not working for me, but we we we, we ain't school food. You know everything about me, the good, the bad, and the ugly. You know that, and that's what the intimacy that God wants to have with us. And and the way He establishes that is by us reading the Word and by prayer daily. The, in other words, He wants to have conversation that we know what's going on. Amen. Amen. And so that's that that's the difference. That's the difference between religion and relationship. Amen. Re reli religion, you only do what, what you're told to do, but in the out of a relationship, you know what's going on. You know why you're doing what you're doing. And and, 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 and that's what Christ wants to have with us is to have the intimacy that he that we know where he is and what he's doing. Amen. Like he did with, with Abraham. Abraham knew everything. Abraham, the Bible says, was a friend of God. Amen. And that comes when you have a friend, you don't do it just out of grudgingly. You do it out of delight. You want to have know what's going on. You want to talk to God every day. You don't see reading the Bible and prayer as, 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 as a burden, but you do it because you love God. Amen. And that's, Amen. that's when you have the connection and where he wants you to be with him. When you are open with him, when you can share where you are with him. Amen. And he can share where he is with, with you. Amen. And that's what he wants on a daily, daily basis. Amen. Most folk come to church and do what they do because they're afraid that God going to spank them. Amen. That they look at God as the old man who looked down on work with his hand raised to whoop you the moment you do something wrong. That's not the kind of relationship that Christ wants to have with us. That's right. He, he wants us to be open with him and to know that he's our friend. He own, and everything he does is for our uh, is for our benefit. Amen. Amen. And that and when you look at what we do 
from that perspective, you do it, amen, out of delight and not out of duty. Amen. And that's the right, that's having the connection that God wants to have with us. Amen. 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 That's it for today. Amen. Let's go to God. Thank you for his word. Father, we come in the precious name of Jesus again to Christ that God, we have found what everyone else is looking for. We found you. And God, we know that you love us. Your word has shown, has said it, and through experiences, Lord, you have shown that you love us, that in spite of ourselves, you desire to have a relationship with us. Thank you for revealing who you are and revealing how you are, that God, that we can be connected with you. And Lord, may we go through life sharing, God, our relationship with you. And Lord, uh, just as you uh, uh, salt water causes us to desire more water to drink, God, we pray that, God, that, uh, that we, uh, Lord, will have a greater desire to be more intimate with you. Thank you for that. Thank you for all that you are going to do in and through our lives. In Jesus' name, amen, and thank God. Now, if you have a personal relationship with, with Jesus Christ, I want you to call. Uh, matter of fact, if you desire to have it, you don't have it, I want you to give me a call. My number uh, for conversation with, is 972-750-7575. Uh, if uh, you're forgiving for those our members who have not given, I want to encourage you to call, call Chris Cash or you can go to the Cash app. Uh, you can call Chris at 214-779-0775 or go to the Cash app, uh, dollar sign two, uh, no, that's mine, 225, that's mine, isn't it, Chris? Amen, You're, what's the what, what's the Cash app? GTMBC. GT? NBC. GTMBC, there it is on the board, there it is. GTMBC, amen. All right, very, very good. All right, and so that concludes the, the uh, message for today. I want to encourage you to join us in prayer meeting on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, amen. Uh, the the, the uh, ID number is 794-040-1471, password 123. Four or five on seven o'clock. Want to encourage us to uh, join us in prayer meeting and then be with us on Sunday at eleven o'clock. We do thank those of us who have been faithful. Again, uh, the, the next Sunday, same time, uh, Facebook and YouTube at same time, same station. Amen. That concludes the, the message for today. Thank you. See you next week.